black cap Kane Williamson and white fern skipper Susie Bates have joined Cricket's True Elite, the 2016 edition of the Cricket Annual Wisdom, which is the Bible for cricket lovers, really. His name both is the world's best cricketers. Fantastic Wisdom described Ms Bates as one of the power hitters of the women's game in 2015, not least when she scored 258 during a whitewash of Sri Lanka. I spoke with Susie in her hometown of Dunedin this morning and asked her how exciting it is to be the best female cricketer in the world. Yeah, when you, when you put it like that, it, it is pretty exciting. And I guess it's just... Um, you know, you look back on the last 12 months and you feel you feel pretty proud of, of what you've done and it just makes it all worth it, I guess. And to, to get recognised like this, it just uh, drives me even more because I love the game so much. When did you find out? How did you find out? <laughs> yeah, well, I actually got rung when I was playing in Perth um, before Christmas by, by Wisden to give me the heads up and then they said it wasn't going to be announced until April, so I've had to keep it pretty quiet. Um, since then, I obviously told my parents and a few people pretty close, but um, I've had to keep it under wraps and uh, last night when it came out, just the messages of support was, was really nice and um, I'm on a bit of a break from cricket, but it is nice to, to have an award like this after a pretty successful year with the White Ferns. A fantastic year with the White Ferns. Such a successful year, both personally and as a team. Tell me about your childhood. You told your parents when you found out, when you were playing in Perth. Did you play lots of cricket in the backyard as a little girl? Yeah, I sure did. I think uh, most people um, my age that, that play um, women's cricket had, had brothers or, or dads and mums that got them out in the backyard. And my two brothers, Tom and Henry, played cricket um, right through the age groups. And I just wanted to get out and, and join in with them. And I remember vividly some of those... Um, after after school nights where, where Tom batted for hours and I was just made to bowl and bowl and sometimes <laughs> didn't get a bat. So there, there <laughs> um, he'd, he'd also make me bowl even closer because it wasn't fast enough. But um, they, they still love following it and they've stopped playing now. But that's where I guess I fell in love with the game and just joined a, a boys club team after that. And the wonderful thing about brothers is that they're so unsentimental, right? I mean, in, in some respects, you know, the, if you can survive playing against your brothers, you can kind of survive anything, can't you? Yeah, exactly. I, I remember when their friends came round, I um, perhaps wasn't good enough to, to play. Uh, they, they sort of said, oh, no, you don't play. They were embarrassed to play with the younger sister. But eventually they let me join in because they realised I wasn't, wasn't too bad. And ever since then, I guess they've kept me pretty grounded and um, remind me when I don't score runs. But also on the flip side, they have been really supportive and, and proud of what I've been able to, to do in the New Zealand side. I think the other thing you've been able to do and the team has been able to do is take women's cricket from out of the shadows. I mean, suddenly people are talking about the team, suddenly you're live on the telly, suddenly people are watching you, suddenly people are engaging with you. That's happened really recently and that must be something you're very proud of. Yeah, and I think um, today with, with the award and I guess the messages I've received in, in the media, that's probably been... The, the, the thing I'm most proud of is um, people are starting to talk about us and the way the girls have gone about their cricket in the, in the last two years. Um, it's just I've always known that, that um, people would have loved the game if they'd seen it and those ones that have been close to it and, and been supportive of it have seen how, how much work the girls put in and it's just nice that the public now, I guess, have access to that and, and can start following the team and start um, young girls can have their favourite female players. I, I know growing up... Um, my favourite players were the likes of Nathan Astle and so hopefully girls are talking about Sophie Devine and, and Rachel Priest and, and Sarah McGlashan as their idols and um, that's probably what's most special about being a female cricketer at the moment is you can really sense um, that the public are, are getting behind us and, and young girls now can aspire to be female role models. And Susie Bates, you didn't mention your own name. There are lots of little kids starting out in the backyard, <laughs> seriously, with their brothers and sisters wanting to be you when they grow up. And that's a magic thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, when I, when I was young, I, I have pictures of, of when I first started playing cricket and you just went out there and, and enjoyed it. And um, it is pretty special that girls now might be wearing the pink white ferns top with um, baits <laughs> on the back of it. And um, if I see that around, it will, it will feel pretty special. But as long as they're, they're playing cricket, it um, doesn't really matter who they look up to.